Hey, good weekend. Welcome to Leading Edge. I'm Jerry Anderson. The U.S. House impeached the president this midweek as though a reflection of the entire House of Representatives, the 5th District's Marcy Capra, a Democrat, voted yes on the articles of impeachment. The 9th District's Bob Latta, a Republican, voted no. Can we re-erect that, please? Marcy's nine, Bob's five. Isn't that correct? Good week and welcome to Leading Edge. I'm Jerry Anderson. The U.S. House impeached the president this midweek as though a reflection of the entire House of Representatives. The 5th District's Marcy Kaptur, a Democrat, voted yes on the articles of impeachment. That is the 9th District. And the 5th District's Bob Latta, a Republican, voted no. The two articles now go to the U.S. Senate where chances of President Trump being removed from office are slim and none. Congressman Latta joins me at the table on next week's show after returning home for the holiday break. But first, this is President Rodney Rogers, the 12th president in the history of Bowling Green State University. He was named interim just two years ago, about this time of year, two years ago, and then officially became the president in February of 2018, closing in on two years now. You were pointing out, we talked recently, that longevity in a public university's presidency is rather rare of late in the state of Ohio. Thoughts on why? Well, there's uh, throughout the country, not just Ohio. I think the role of uh, being a university president at one time, you would serve for 15, 20, 25 right. years. And, and now it's a much shorter time frame. And I think part of it's just the, the type of job it is yeah. anymore. There's lots of competition, yeah. lots of changes going on. In Education is something we love to address on this show with regularity simply because of the importance. Now, BG bucking some national trends when it comes to enrollment this fall up, what, 2%? Uh, 1.9%, up 2%. Yep. And, 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 with, and doing that without watering down standards. How'd that happen? Well, you know, it's a combination of a couple of things. We've uh, seen an increase in our retention uh, and our graduation rate, so we're keeping the students that we're recruiting. We've also had great growth in some new academic programs that we've rolled out over the last few years. Uh, everything from our new program in aviation mm -hmm. to our new program in forensic science, um, software engineering, uh, inclusive early childhood. You know, those are some of the programs that we've seen huge growth in. And uh, it has driven our enrollment just this past year. But, but if you look over the last five years, we're up about 5.5%. So we're averaging a little over 1% a year in growth. Still in your strategic plan, you point out that there is what is being called a dramatic decline in the number of high school grads in 2024. That presents a huge challenge for what the plan calls the traditional Midwest University. What is being done now to prepare for that dramatic decline? So two changes, or two, two um, strategies mm -hmm. that we have. One is that we are continuing to uh, be more and more intentional in the undergrad experience at Bowling Green to make sure we differentiate the experience at BG relative to perhaps some other universities. Okay. Part of that is intentionality. Part of, part of that is a holistic approach to undergrad education. So we're really focused on making sure that the career, they're prepared for careers, they've thought about purpose, passion, health and wellness, 
physical, mental, and financial. Health and wellness is one of the pillars. And connections, how do you leverage connections? So we have a framework that we're using to intentionally prepare students. We believe it'll differentiate ourselves in the market. And two, we are very interested in focusing on specific programs that have high demand for post-traditional students. I want to talk about a couple of those because, again, from your plan and in, in, in digging deep into some of it, BGSU, it says, needs to step up in a couple of academic areas that are seeing enrollment growth elsewhere, healthcare and engineering. And the folks over at U Toledo, the president was here last week, they're calling themselves U Toledo now, uh, could easily say, hey, we're on it and have been. How does BG counter that? So, um, you know, in healthcare, we've uh, had a nursing program for many, many years. Uh, um, in terms of public universities, we were the first in Northwest Ohio to have that. Okay. And then MCO, uh, Medical College of Ohio, and then with the uh, merger with the U Toledo, uh, and all of those things, um, we had a joint program. And so what, what we've done is when Toledo came to us a couple of years ago and said, you know, they were interested in stepping away from that relationship, uh, what we did was um, work to a, a partnership with Bon Secours Mercy Health and Mercy College to make sure that we're meeting the needs of Ohioans. And now the advantage for our region is we've got um, uh, programs now where we will be increasing the number of nurses uh, being educated in Northwest Ohio. So it's, it's good for both universities, it's good for the region. Um, that's one healthcare. We're also, uh, software engineering is a program we've had for a few years. We have seen huge growth in the software engineering program and in the computer science and the data engineering and the, and the data science areas. So those are the STEM fields. And in all of those areas, actually, we complement nicely the uh, University of Toledo. Uh, in that uh, our focus is heavy on software engineering. They're more on the hardware side, mm -hmm. on the computer engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, on the data science and the big data, we're the only university in the United States that actually has an undergrad, a master's, and a PhD in data science now. We just yeah. rolled our, out our new PhD. I think those are the fields that universities to think about this demographic yeah. decline we're gonna see, yeah. we need to make sure we're being more responsive and more uh, quicker to the market, if you will, for programs that are in, in, in high demand from society. One of the things is there are fewer and fewer high school graduates. It's a demographic thing, people having fewer kids and all that kind of good stuff. You would think that to get those, a number of kids into your, into your institution, you might have to lower standards, but the academic preparedness of students entering BG remains very high and over 3.5 GPA. Honors College seeing a 19%. 19% search. These are kids with a 4.07 grade point average, over 1,300 on the SAT, 28 on the ACT. These are smart kids. Jerry wasn't there. Does BG what, incentivize their enrollment, or how do you get those guys and gals at BG? Well, so uh, we've got a standalone honors college, and, right. and the curriculum matters and the experience a student has. So we have learning communities. We have a very intentional approach to how we educate those students. Uh, we've also been uh, very fortunate that uh, we're in the middle of a comprehensive campaign right now. We've been very fortunate to have some donors that have really stepped up and made some significant support for the university, for scholarships, and so we're able okay. to offer some significant scholarships to some great students. Um, but can I add, you know, it is important as a public university, you know, a, a mantra that we keep repeating at Bowling Green is, we, we want to be that public university driving public good. Yeah, we, I see it all the time. And yeah. we, we link those two together. And how do we do that is to make sure each of our students are prepared for a relevant, meaningful life. But we want to make sure that there's pathways for students for wherever they are that we can get them where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And so while we're proud of the Honors College and we have great retention and graduation rates with those very high achieving students, as we should, right. we also want to make sure there's multiple pathways. And so we have a program called the Firelands Pathway. These are students that are probably, that wouldn't be necessarily regularly admitted, but we right. believe they've got a shot to be successful. And so we admit them, we work closely with them, and we're pretty proud of the Using the, the secondary results. campus? Yes. Over at Fire Islands, yeah. Huron, Ohio. Right, in uh, Huron, Ohio. Much more to talk about. He is the president of Bowling Green State University, Dr. Rodney Rogers. This is Leading Edge. We're back right after this.